Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank each of you for joining with us for Monday's Daily Bible Study, coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministries. We have a great and wonderful lesson for today. <clears throat> Jeremiah calls for vindication. Jeremiah calls for vindication. And our lesson is coming from Lamentations 3, verse, chapter 3, verse 55 through 66. Hey Amen. We have a great and wonderful lesson. But before we get started, I want to ask if anything is said touches your heart, soul, or spirit. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to jot them at the bottom of the screen below, and I will get to them as soon as possible. Also, if you would, subscribe to my channel and join with us as we gather together to study and meditate on the Word of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> we're going to get ready to move into our lesson, but first we're going to have prayer. Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Father. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you for watching over us, taking care of us. We thank you, Father, for being with us in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for watching over our children, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for, for strengthening them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for sending laborers alone in their past, Father, and that something is said touches their heart, mind, soul, and spirit, Father, and that they may get closer and closer to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you honor, glory, and praise. Father, as we get ready to come to your word, Father, we thank you that our eyes is open and we see, our ears is open and we hear, and we gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word, Father, that we are more proficient doers of your word and not just hearers only. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, as we said, <clears throat> our lesson, Jeremiah calls for vindication. Amen. Lamentation 3, verse 55 to 66. And the scripture lesson takes read, I called on your name, O Lord, from the depths of the pit. You heard my plea. Do not close your ear to my cry for help. You came near when I called on you. You said, do not fret. You have taken up my cause. Oh, Lord, you have redeemed my life. Jeremiah was held in the cistern, and they had to take ropes to pull him out of it. Undoubtedly, he cried to God during this time. Hide not thy ear at my uh, breathing at my cry, turn not a deaf ear to me. Who has been accustomed to hear me hear the two four? Stop not thine ear at my cry now, at my prayer, which he calls his breathing. Prayer is the breath of a soul regenerated by the Spirit and is a sign and evidence of life. When it is spiritual in it, a soul pants after God and communion with him and salvation by him. Some render it at my gasping or panting for breathing, just ready to expire unless immediate help is given. God heard Jeremiah and answered him, Back to fear not. Jeremiah is now crying out for the people of Jerusalem and wants God to give him the same attention as he did when he was in the sistery. There is no doubt at all that God spared Jeremiah's life in this war with Babylon. And even when the people had turned against him, and imprisoned him, God gave Jeremiah's life. Amen. As we know, Jeremiah was the, uh, we spoke about Jeremiah uh, a week or so back where he was the young uh, uh, prophet that God called on uh, from a young child and he uh, told him, you know, that he uh, would not, um, uh, he did not uh, uh, marry, if I'm not mistaken, due to, uh, uh, because he was called to be for God, amen. And so he uh, gave up his life 
for the word, for the, for to do God's bidding. Amen. But uh, Jeremiah had been called before uh, uh, his before his his even being born, before he was even conceived. Jeremiah was 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 was, was had a position placed for him. Amen. So uh, Jeremiah uh, was, uh, uh, but yet and still, we have to realize, you know, we uh, see that the word says that God knew us before we were even thought about and all this, but we have to realize even in those situations, Jeremiah still had to call to God for help. As God had told him, he would not leave him nor forsake him, but he still had to call on him to help him in times of distress. Amen. Verse 59, uh, uh, 3 and 59, You have seen the wrong done to me, O Lord. Judge my cause. You have seen all their vengeance, all their plots against me. You have heard their taunts, O Lord, all their plots against me. And the lip and thoughts of my ass assailants are against me all the day long. He is pleading for Jerusalem. His cause is in behalf of the people of Jerusalem and all their imaginations against me. Their secret covertness of mischief, their plots and schemes they devise to do hurt unto me. Me is Jerusalem here. God sees all he does not overlook anything. It is as if Jeremiah is pleading with God that they have suffered enough. Talking about God's chosen people, Israel. Jeremiah is pleading for them because he believes they've suffered enough. They're in Babylon. They have been captured all their lands have been taken away. They no longer have have homes of their own. They they, they have they have got to a a low portion. Uh, but the main thing is they must turn and repent and repent. Their reproachful words uttered against the prophet and his people against God himself, their spiteful language, their taunts and scoffs and jeers. The sense is that the Lord heard the words which dropped from the lips of his enemies. Their sarcasm, flouts and jeers, their bitter uh, reflections, severe in, in, inventives and scornful language. Behold, their sitting and their rising. I am the object of their thoughts. You will repay them, O Lord, according to the work of their hands. You will give them dullness of heart. Your curse will be on them. You will pursue them in anger and destroy them from under your heavens, O Lord. Jeremiah's spoken curse is a parallel is in parallel in many psalms in which the author is so immersed in God's will that he rightly longs for the vindication of God's righteousness as well as the punishment of the enemy. The prayer of Jeremiah for divine vengeance would be answered in Babylon's fall, not as petitions, but as prophecies of what should be. But they seem rather to be expressed by way of request, and there <clears throat> and here that God would deal with them according to the law of retaliation and require them according to what they had done, that he would do to them as they had done to the Lord's people and others. And this is ordered to be done particularly to the Chaldeans or Babylonians. This is asking for Babylon to be judged 
for their sins they committed against the Jerusalem. As they have persecuted the people of God, do, their, do thou persecute them and never leave pursuing them until thou hast made a full end of them as the effect of vindictive wrath for vengeance. We are not to avenge ourselves. God will take vengeance on those who have, who have sinned. He is the judge. Jeremiah is speaking for Jerusalem here. They will not take vengeance, but wait on, on, wait on God to do so. Amen. We are not to take vengeance. We are to turn it over to God. Amen. <clears throat> As Jeremiah is uh, seeking for vengeance, for vengeance for uh, the Israelites, uh, he, he, he even though the Israelites has put themselves in this predicament because they sinned, they would went against God's will, uh, and God allowed the Babylonians to come in and take over. You know, it's just like uh, uh, it, it's a, a lesson in the Bible where uh, uh, some uh, the people had went against the Israelites, and God had said because of the way they did it, the intensity, the intensity of their vengeance against the Israelites was why God was against them. They had did what God wanted them to do, but they went to an extreme in uh, going against them. Amen. So we have to be mindful. Uh, if God has put us in a situation, even if we are being uh, chastised, that if we feel that it is a gift, is greater than what is needed uh, or expected, then we can go to God and ask him to do vengeance for us, that it is they have gone beyond what he has asked of them in, 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 in getting his children in line and chastising us. Amen. So this is a powerful lesson teaching us that uh, even though God will turn us over uh, to situations that to, 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 to chastise us, he still will uh, give vengeance for us in things that has been gone, uh, they have went overboard in what they are doing. Amen. So this is a great and powerful lesson teaching us, even in our being chastised, that God is still there for us. Amen. This is a wonderful lesson. I pray you meditate on this lesson and have a wonderful and blessed day. God bless you.